it was confirmed that Gonzalo Higuain is a Chelsea player. This is something we've talked a lot about over the last couple <laughs> really? of weeks. Uh, Higuain, he won't be eligible for their game against Spurs, uh, but of course, uh, I believe, will be in attendance. The big question, I suppose, from a Chelsea perspective is whether or not they can finally find a decent striker, because you take a look at the players that have come in after Didier Drogba, and really, you could just say that Diego Costa is the standout talent because the rest of those have been pretty much, it's fair to say, isn't it, Craig? Busts. Well, Anelka's goal scoring was not too bad. Batshuayi was young. Maratta was a disaster. Batshuayi was young, as was Lukaku. So Lukaku was a young young man when he came in there and went out and, and loaned on a couple of occasions. Fernando Torres was over the hill. Yep. And Ancelotti, didn't, and who was the manager at the time, didn't want Fernando Torres, but Roman Abramovich and his, his henchmen went out and, and gave Liverpool uh, crazy money for him, and I think Shevchenko was just tailing off at Milan from that great career he had uh, as a goal scorer. Uh, when he, by the time he got to Chelsea, it was just falling apart a little bit for him. Uh, I don't think we're, we're there at all with with Iguain, mm. but we are certainly in a, a Chelsea side that is getting asked more questions now at the moment, particularly the manager, particularly the way he plays, particularly his formation, his personnel within that formation, and I, and I really think as as much as they needed a striker. I don't think that solves the problems for Sarri. It will solve some of the problems, right. but not all of the problems. Stevie, obviously a lot of people going back to the time that he scored 36 yep. goals under Sarri yep. during that record-breaking season in Napoli. Mm -hmm. What sort of numbers would we expect from Higuain over the, over, what, from now to the end of the season? Um, I, I, I would expect one and two anyway. Right. Um, and that will make a huge difference. You know, the, the, the two things are, number one, you get a centre forward who scores goals. And, and if you look at Higuain, there's only one negative, and that is that people question his fitness and does he get around. But you can't question he puts the ball in the back of the net. And the second most important thing about Higuain coming to Chelsea is it gets Hazard out of that centre forward spot yeah. and gets him to where he's at his best, wide run at defenders. So this is a huge fill-up for Chelsea. Raf, what do you think? Is this going to be a success? Well, first of all, I think we have to understand that this is a victory for Sarri because Sarri wanted Higuain in the summer. Higuain himself said, Sarri was the only one at Chelsea who wanted me, so I couldn't quite go. Well, now more people seem to have agreed with Sarri that he is the answer or can at least do a job. So he got his will, but at the same time, now that puts the pressure on him to really now deliver with the guy he wanted to begin with. I agree with Stevie, I think... Uh, releasing Eden Hazard in itself is already a huge boon, a huge bonus. I question the mobility of uh, Higuain and I question his ability to lead the line the way that, uh, that Chelsea really need to. Uh, so these are my two issues. He's going to score goals. If people put crosses in, if they get into tight spaces, they feed him, he's going to do better than what they have at the moment. Whether it's going to be enough to make fourth place, I'm still not sure. See, that's the big question, isn't it? And that's why we've talked about it so much, because the momentum that Manchester United have, and of course that Arsenal win over Chelsea, means that the lead in fourth place is now just three points. The bookies still have them as odds-on favourites to join Spurs City and Liverpool in the Champions League next season. Does Iguain cement that top four place for them? Uh, not guaranteed, no. I, I mean, obviously it helps, but it does put a huge pressure back on Eden Hazard now because, and, and, and also Willian or Pedro or Hudson Adoy who plays on the other side if he doesn't go to Bayern Munich because, you know, and we've talked about Jorginho a lot, but when teams start setting people on him, he's, just, he's passionate, he's like a crab, isn't he? He's passionate sideways, let's be yeah. frank. And then you got N'Golo Kante, he's not going to be creative. He'll, he'll run around and he'll work. Kovacic is not having a great time and Barkley's been in and out. So all the... You know, all the supply has to come from the two wide positions. Iguain's not going to do it himself. He's not that type of player. He's a penalty box striker. It then has to come from Hazard and A and other who's playing the other side. That puts a lot of pressure on them because there's not a lot of creativity in that Chelsea midfield three. There's not a lot of box-to-box -box, uh, midfield running in that midfield three. I know Kante will get forward now and again, but let's just not talk about him as a natural goal scorer because he's not. So that piles the pressure onto those front three that I'm talking about. So will they be in top four at the end of the season, Chelsea? I think if Iguain gets the, the one and two goals, Steve, I think just, just. Yeah, I think they will. Are you more confident than him? Um, I, I can't disagree with anything he said, but I don't particularly trust Arsenal and Manchester United. Yes, Manchester United uh, are a runaway train right now, but 
I can't wait to see how they handle some adversity. You know, what will Solskjaer do? It's dead easy, it's dead easy when you well, just Well, he won't win. throw his players under the bus. No, he he'll won't just, do that. He'll, he'll crack it's, on and, and regroup. It's the easiest job in the world when your team's just winning and winning. You just you don't really have to do too much. You just keep, keep them happy and keep them fit. But when some adversity happens, I love to see where how the players react. Right. And, I, and as, as, I've, as I've said before, I don't trust Arsenal's back four. They were great last weekend, yes, but I, I don't trust them. 